Hi everyone, in today's video, I'll talk about cervicitis, which is a very common condition that affects more than one half of all women at some point during their adult life. I'll talk about the causes, the symptoms, how diagnosis is made, the treatments and how it can be prevented. Cervicitis is an inflammation of the uterine cervix, which is the lower, narrow end of the uterus that opens into the vagina. There are two types of cervicitis. The first type is acute cervicitis, also known as infectious cervicitis, which is usually caused by infection, and the second type is chronic cervicitis, which is the non-infectious type, usually due to irritation. Cervicitis affects female of any age. The disease is known to affect people of all races, ethnic groups, and geographical areas. Sexually active women and older women are at a higher risk. The likelihood of getting cervicitis increases with engaging in unhealthy sexual behavior, use of birth control pills or spermicidal creams on a regular basis, previous history of sexually transmitted disease, use of alcohol or other drugs, use of vaginal douches, and surgery or radiation therapy to the cervical region. The causes of cervicitis can be divided into two based on the types of cervicitis, and this are infectious cervicitis and non-infectious cervicitis. We'll look at each of these in details. We'll first begin with the infectious causes of cervicitis. Just as the name suggests, infectious cervicitis is usually caused by an infection. Chlamydia trachomatis is the most prevalent infectious cause of cervicitis. It is followed by Neisseria gonorrhea as the second most common cause. The other cause is bacterial vaginosis, which is the overgrowth of bacteria that are normally present in the vagina. Bacterial infections caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Grupa streptococcus occur rarely. The viral causes of infectious cervicitis are herpes simplex virus, human papillomavirus, and cytomegalovirus to a lesser extent in immunocompetent patients. Parasitic cause of cervicitis is by Trichomonas vaginalis. Chronic cervicitis, which is the non-infectious type is caused by irritation due to the insertion of devices such as cervical caps or tampons. Allergies to vaginal douches, condoms, contraceptive creams like spermicides, local trauma, chemical irritation, iatrogenic cause including recent surgeries, and radiation therapy involving the cervix, systemic inflammation, and malignancy. Cervicitis is often asymptomatic in chlamydia, gonorrhea, and trichomonas vaginalis infections because the symptoms of this disease mask the symptoms of cervicitis. Cervicitis symptoms to watch for include swelling and redness of the cervix, itching in the genital area, vaginal discharge that may be gray, white or yellow and might have foul-smelling odor, abnormal vaginal bleeding that may be postcoital, intermenstrual or postmenopausal, increased frequency of urination, dyspareunia or pain during intercourse, and sometimes ulceration. The diagnosis of cervicitis is made through thorough medical history evaluation and physical examination. Sexually active teenagers and young adults should be screened on a regular basis. One of the tests that is done is pap smear exam that involves collecting a swab of cells from the cervix and examining them under a microscope. A culture of tissue or discharge can be done to determine the type of causative organism. Tests for chlamydia and gonorrhea is also done. The treatment depends on the cause of the inflammation. If chlamydia is the cause, antibiotic treatment of azithromycin or doxycycline is given. Antiviral medication, if viruses are the cause of the condition, it is important to refrain from sexual activity until the treatment is done and the partner should also be treated. Complications of cervicitis might occur when infections ascend and cause endometritis and pelvic inflammatory disease. If the affected individual is pregnant, cervicitis can cause infection of the placenta and the baby. If infection is caused by human papillomavirus there is increased risk of cervical cancer. There is high risk of recurrence of the condition even after treatment. In most situations, if the source of inflammation is recognized and treated effectively, cervicitis will go away. And that will be all for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.